Nick Savage, Friday night. Bob Redden. Checking to see if I'm stalling on your case. Oh, nothing like that. I traced one of the beneficiaries to Chicago and I've been waiting all morning on a wire. We want you to drop the case. We want you to take another one. We carry a theft policy on a West Coast loan company. Three of the branches in San Francisco were just robbed. And just a matter of hours ago. Yeah, all this morning. There was one other that wasn't ours. I got a phone call. I haven't even figured the law shit, but it'll be way up. We'd like you to get right on it. Uh, sure, Bob. I'll catch a plane this evening. <laughs> to police headquarters to get a briefing. I'm not making excuses. They put us off balance, that's all. We got the call from the place on Market Street at 9.15 yesterday morning, just a few minutes after they'd opened. While we were down there, the call came in from the Mission District. Same loan company, different brand. Then, not 40 minutes later, the other company was here. Mm, quite an operation. Tell you, we had more officers on the streets than there were civilians. There hasn't been as much confusion since the quake and fire of 1906. And look here. This is your list of witnesses? Yeah. You can see only about 35 out of the 53 names are employees of these loan companies. They're the ones we're sure saw this part. What did they give you? How it goes. You have to make a sort of composite of the statements. Seems this bunch would come in, from 8 to 10 of them all armed. Two would take care of any customers that happened to be in the waiting room, kick them to the floor face down, and the rest would cover the office for us and knock over the cashier. What kind of disguises? And some say none. Others think they saw makeup, stage makeup, you know, lines and the stuff to change the shape of the nose and so on. I'll go along with that. Yeah. What I got on the rest of their physical descriptions doesn't exactly hurt, but it doesn't help any either. How about voices? Only one did the talking, the high voice. Uh, Fault settle, not a woman. Pretty well planned job, wasn't it? Four in the space of two hours for forty-seven thousand dollars. I say it was well planned. No prints. Nobody spotted any cars, but. Must have used at least two, probably with a driver for each. What do the rest of the witnesses say? Oh, some of them are crank. Some of them claim they saw the buck come out of the buildings, but didn't think anything about it till the news began to break on the robberies and so on. You know witnesses. Mm -hmm. I wish I'd stayed in homicide. With the killing, you've at least got a stiff to work from. Yes. No, I don't Who's want to that? talk to him. Tell him I'm grilling a hot suspect in Daly City. What a commie. The manager of that outfit you're interested in wants to know if I'm doing anything. For to call loan company. That's a great name. You know what their motto is? When financial seas are troubled, make us your port of call. Now tell me, what self-respecting grifter could pass up an invitation like that? <laughs> San Francisco is a city of bridges with few other exits. All of these have been covered in less than an hour after the first robbery report had been phoned in. To double check, the adjoining counties had been alerted and were swarming with men. San Francisco itself was being combed for known criminals. Yes? Oh, how are you, Bruce? Well, I could use something. What is it? How would that fit? Oh. Good, I do. Well, thanks a lot, Bruce. Well, it'll be a change of scenery anyway. Something up? That was missing persons. A woman reported her husband missing since sometime yesterday. A cab driver. I never gave it a thought. Why is it you always connect private cars to jobs like that? Well, we'll see. She's on her way down. I'd like to have you see her, too. Yeah, sure. Is this Miss Garvin? 
10 o'clock. I've gotten her report and told her you want to talk to her. Oh, good. Thanks, Bruce. What do you want to talk to me for? You haven't done nothing wrong, has he? Not that we know of, Mrs. Guy. You wouldn't do nothing wrong. You never have. Who are you? I'm not a lot of policemen have had such a guy. What are you doing here? I don't understand this. Do you think something happened to your husband? Did he have an accident in his cab or something like that? Yeah. He didn't have an accident. His company would have known. What company is that? Curlis. No one. Didn't they know he was missing? How would they know? Didn't he check his cab in with the company? We always go to the cab. There's an agreement about money and gas and the license. And that I don't understand it because Joe never talks about business. Why are you asking me these questions? Don't you read the papers, Mrs. Guy? No, I don't have time with three kids in the room to take care of. What if I did read them? Life wants you. Say they found Joe dead someplace? Nothing, Nothing like that, Mrs. Guy. I'm sorry I mentioned it. What do they say? I got a right to know. I'll buy a paper for the streetcar on the way home anyway. There were four robberies yesterday, big ones. None of the witnesses saw the cars the men got away in. Maybe they wouldn't notice a taxi. You saying you think Joe was in on it? Not necessarily, no. We have to ask questions like that. Wouldn't do nothing wrong like that. Of course not. Even if he did, I'd know about it. And then do you think I'd come down here like this? Of course not. Doesn't your husband ever stay away from home this long? No, what no. Time I got to leave yesterday from someplace. That's why I got to worry, and I never called at all yesterday. What time did he leave yesterday morning? I told the other cop that. Why don't you tell us? Yeah. Right before eight. Go home and don't worry, Mrs. Guy. We'll find your husband. I think Mrs. Guy can go now, don't you? We'll find your husband. We'll He's got to come back. I don't know how I'll match with the kids if you don't. We'll find them. You know the way out, don't you? This way? That's right. Then uh, down the corridor. What do you think? I don't know. That's why I had to try the robberies out on her. She could have been here to put the finger on the husband who double-crossed her. Seemed to be sure he hadn't had an accident. Yeah, that's right. right. There must be a reason all those witnesses didn't see a private car. Huh? That figures, too. I'll put a tail on her right now. Paul ever. He wasn't here for the meal last night, but what is that? You live alone here? Yes. I take it you mean he was off and away from home at dinner time. He was head personality. He often goes someplace else to eat. You know if he came home at all last night? My tenants live their own lives. I don't run a girls' school here. You show me some party. Why should I? I told you didn't you. tell it might me be what very you mean. He might Oh, not Paul. He might even be dead. Why do you want to look in his apartment? Well, I told you, this is police business. Do you want to cooperate or not? Sure I do. I'll take you up. I didn't find even a trace of a lead in Vendini's apartment. The next morning, the two missing drivers and their cabs still had not been found. The police report on Mrs. Geyer hadn't offered anything. The $47,000 in stolen funds could have been that many miles away from San Francisco. Through the morning and early afternoon, a dozen general suspects were questioned and released. And then, sometime after three, the body of a man was found floating in a slough in the upper reaches of the bay. He fitted the description of Joe Geyer, and an hour or so later, his wife arrived to make identification. Geyer, could you swear that this body is that of your husband, Joseph Geyer? No. No, it's not Joe. But Geyer, he fits your description of your husband. Who care? It's not Joe. You sure you aren't holding anything back from us? Yeah, I'm sure it's not Joe. I'd know my own husband, wouldn't I? Yes, you would, Mrs. Geyer. My husband was dead and this was him. I'd tell you, wouldn't I? I hope so. I think you would. Why wouldn't I? It's not Joe. I don't know who it is. I never saw him in my whole life and I can prove it. I swear I never saw this man in my whole life. <laughs> We will return you to the second act in just a moment. There's one married couple you can always depend on for fun on Saturday evenings, and to invite them over is as easy as my favorite husband. 
And the nice thing about them is you don't have to get involved in the strange predicaments they get into. All you have to do is sit back and laugh at the results. How's for asking them in this evening? My favorite husband will be waiting on most of these same stations. We return you to the second act. Nick Savage, Private Eye. I arrived at a small freeing house about an hour after she had. What do you want? I need any help from you. I don't need Nico. Get your foot out. You got no right to do it. I don't care. It wasn't Joe. Open the door, Mrs. Guy. You can't come in. Why did you get so upset if it wasn't your husband? You cried. I couldn't help. I never saw a dead body before. I went to pieces for I am not. Why should I? Joe hasn't done nothing wrong, and I haven't needed. Now go away and leave me alone. I got ironing to do. Steady people. Well, that's fine. That's the man I met from the insurance company. Oh, yes. Well, how did you say this? Mr. Prince, the cashier at the Port of Call office in the mission. No. no. Oh, it's nice to know you, Mr. Prince. You think? He looked at that body, and he seems to be fairly sure that it's the one who did the talking during the robbery. At his I'm sure it is. I hope you're right. Oh, of course. He did look different with that makeup, his nose, and his cheekbones. Aren't you still sure? Yes, I am. I've been with the Port of Call for almost ten years. And as I was telling Lieutenant Clark... When you've been in the loan business as long as that, you learn to study it. I suppose you would. You meet somebody, and while they're talking about the loan, they want you sort of unconsciously study it. Try and find out how much truth they're telling you. Oh, I remember that man, the makeup on the room. What in particular do you remember? Oh, a lot of things. He walked right up to me, you know. I remember his eyes and his ears. I remember his hands. They were manicured. And he wore a ring on his finger left. There's polish on the nails, all right. Now the ring was brought in, but there's the mark of one, and it's third finger left. I wish there were more witnesses like you. Well, thank you. Thanks very much for coming down, Mr. Prince. Well, that's quite all right. And I hope we don't have to trouble you again. Well, there's no trouble at all, Lieutenant. I'll be glad to be of service to you. Good day. Good day, Mr. Well, it looks like we've got that much anyway. We've run quite a few of the loan company people past the body, and almost half thought he was the one they all set up. Dead men don't answer many questions. Notice that. I understand Mrs. Geyer didn't answer many either. Well, how did, how you... did you? Oh. Well, you still got men out there. Yeah. I haven't been able to spare any relief, so that pair I assigned yesterday's been on the plant day and night. Mm-hmm. So when somebody finally showed up, they thought they'd broken the case. No use. She wouldn't let me in, and she didn't change her story. We'll check it. We've got a man from the cab company coming down. Lieutenant. 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 She said she didn't have time to read the paper with three kids and a rumor to take care of. Remember this? Yes, by that time I'd asked a few thousand questions. She did. I think I remember that. Yeah, it's something we should check. Your men say that outside of me, nobody's shown up at her house, huh? Even staying out last night, you'd think this room would come back sometime for clothes or for something. something. We'll try it. Bruce, send two plainclothes men out to the Geyer home on 4th Avenue and talk to the neighbors on each side. I need somebody who knows the Geyer's rumor by sight. I want them to look at a body. Um, the lights are on. I guess she's home. Which one is it? The one with the porch light. Sure, turning into a nice night. Yeah. Seven o'clock? Huh? Oh, quick. What are you doing out here, sir? I'm going to talk to the woman. I'm not going to be relieved. I'll have a relief out here in an hour. Nine o'clock. That's a promise. I'm sorry about the rain. Yes, sir. I'm afraid you'll have to let us in this time, Mrs. Guy. What are you talking about? This is a warrant. We're here legally. I want you to tell me the truth. When did you last see the man who rooms here? I don't know. I don't remember. That isn't the truth you saw this afternoon. I'm at the morgue and you didn't tell us who he was. Why not? Don't you wake up my kids. Answer my question, Mrs. Mrs. Guy. I was afraid to tell Why were you afraid? Because with Joe gone like this, I thought something happened. 
I know I should have told you, but I couldn't. He's my husband. What were you afraid had happened? You and me argued sometimes about Mr. Grace. Grace? What's his first name? I thought you knew about him. The neighbors identified his butt, but they couldn't remember his name. His name was Ted Grace. Your husband was jealous? He argued sometimes. He was a salesman. Some weeks he'd have a lot of money, and I told Joe he ought to sell his cab and be a salesman, too. He got the wrong idea and thought I was falling for Mr. Grace. I wasn't. I couldn't ever make him believe me all the way. Why did he let Grace live here if he felt that way? He needed the money. Do you think your husband killed Grace? I don't know. I was afraid to tell you I knew Mr. Grace for fear he did. That's what happened. He didn't kill him out of jealousy. Grace was mixed up in those robberies I told you about. Do you remember? I got the newspapers. That's what we're here to clear up. We want you to tell us everything you know about Grace. How do you know he was mixed up in... You'll have to take our word for that. Come on, you must know something about him. How long has he been working here? Do you know where he came from? Do you know where he came from? Do you have any friends? Must have had some friends. Didn't anybody come to see him? No. I had a telephone. Did anybody ever call him? Yeah, a man used to call him. Same one all the time? Yes. Must have given you his name sometime. No, he didn't. Did you recall while Ted Grace was gone? Yeah, once in a while. Did Grace leave a number of somebody where he could be reached? Usually a place called a furlong over on Fulton. Why didn't you tell us that? Why do we have to drag these things out of here? What else are you holding back from us? Nothing. I just can't think. I just can't think of anything. But where's Joe and why don't he come back? Was, was there anything different the morning? No, left? nothing. Was Grace here at this time? Two. About the same time? Right after. Joe's mixed up in those robberies. It's my fault because I talk so much about money. Well, he can hate me for that. But what about the kids? He can't leave them for me to take care of alone, can he? You better take a look at Grace's room, don't you think, Lieutenant? Uh, which one is it, Mrs. Geyer? Ted Grace's effects told a lot more about him than his landlady had. A drawer full of racing forms made it appear that the man who phoned had probably the bookie. Because of Ted Grace's ties and shirts, an array of cheap men's toiletries painted a pretty good picture of the character he'd been. But the contents of the waste paper basket made him out the mastermind of the whole series of robberies. Shredded paper. They'd been applications for loans from the victim companies. Made out while he cased the offices. Look at the blank side. Yeah, the floor plans thrown out. Hey, look here, a name. It's only here. Positions, movements were marked out, too. Here's another name, Mark. Yeah. Let's not waste any more time here. I'll take them down to headquarters, get somebody to paste them up. I guess we've covered the place all right. He obviously didn't expect us to come back here. Yeah. I have a feeling the rest of them might still be in the city. Me too. That might have been the plan. Yeah, that might have been the plan. Going now? Yeah, we'll go. Unless you have something more to tell us. I don't know any more to tell you. It's a big mess, and I don't understand any of it. I don't know what it's all about. Well, I was sorry to have you. It'll turn out all right, boys. Good night, Mr. Guy. Clark. Yes, Bridget. The radio car stopped by with a message for you. But I didn't want to come in with a woman there. Her husband's dead. So is the other driver, Landine. Where were they found? In that cab in the vacant garage out toward the beach. Who's on it? Lieutenant McMillan. All right, I'll contact him. And don't forget our release. I won't. I won't. Well, there goes Guy and Landini. Elimination for more profit. That or cutting the link between the rest of the bunch and the only tangible things we have. Cabs. That could be. Hey, if you want to drop me at that bar she mentioned, the furlong. Sure, sure, if you want to. I'll stay in my office while I hear from you. Hey, I'm looking for a guy you might know. Ted Grace. Ted Grace. And he's in here quite a bit. Good evening, sir. Hi. I guess a rye and soda. Yes. Oh, you must be an Easterner. I don't get many calls for rye except for you. Well, that's almost right. I transplanted myself out here. Who? Ted Grace. Uh, Why do I find that rye? Yeah. Yeah. A couple of guys, Ted knows. Uh, one named Mark. That's all right. And there's yeah. Tony something. You see, I, I'm not the regular bartender. I don't know your friend uh, by name, anyway. Thanks. Uh, I'm sorry. Thanks. I'll look around. Uh, Maybe you'll come hey, back. Uh, See you later. What about a couple of guys Ted knows, then? Mark? Uh, the other's Tony's. No. Uh, guess I can't help you. I usually work a place down in Gary. I don't know this one very well. Yeah. Good night. Hey, Tony! 
Tony was forgetting his customers. He was heading towards the rear of the room. When he got there, he disappeared into a phone booth. A lot of cases are broken through a stroke of luck. The place was cleared of people, and Tony stood alone behind the bar, giving away his guilt by his expression and the apron he kept twisting in his hand. Leave your apron alone. What is all this? Who did you phone right after I left? to say I'd be late. That's not true. The call was traced. You're crazy. How could you trace it? You were calling all. Why should you care if it was traced or not? I now, who did you call? I could make a phone call if I wanted, can I? That isn't the question. What makes you so nervous? You guys busting in like, what do you expect? Find a guy named Tony. What's your last name, Tony? Tell it. That's what I came here for, too, Tony. And we found him... All we were going to do was ask him to tell us where he was the other morning while those loan company officers were being knocked over. And if he couldn't, we were going to see him booked for three killings. Ted Grace and Joe Gaia and Paul Landini. I don't know what you're talking about. You're bluffing, but you're bluffing the wrong guy. Mm, I'm glad to hear that. We would want to see an innocent man booked for something he didn't do. So let's clear it up. How do we start proving where you were between 9 and about 11 the other morning? Where were you? Come on, where were you? Come on, Maria. I was home asleep. And a lot of people must hate you. Who? Oh. The people who said they saw you leave your place about 8 o'clock. Uh, what's the use? I don't know if you're bluffing yeah. or not. We aren't. The creases from we found the floor plans of all the offices and all the names of all of you. We talked to Joe Gary's wife. She knew about you and Mark. You just made a confession. Do you want to take the whole rap yourself? No. If I'd known there was going to be any killing, I wouldn't get mixed up. When I was, I knew the whole thing would blow up. Who did the killing? There were three of them. Harvey Shoot, Vic Lincoln, and Neil White. I'm not sure which they did. I don't know. They got out of prison someplace in the East about six months ago. We met them and got running around with them. We'd been playing the horses, not doing so well. And they said if we got a big stake, they knew how to make a killing. That's the way it started. Who's we, Tony? My friends. Mark Rose and Leo Barrett. Ted Grace. Is that all? Give it to my friends. That's enough. That what about Joe Geyer? No. No, they just called him to get his cab used instead of cars. He wasn't. Oh, Grace's idea. I guess so. The smart guy. You were all pretty smart. What about Landini? He was called, too. I don't know what happened. They went crazy after we got the money. They were like different people that I didn't know. Could have killed all of us from crossed. Are they on narcotics? I don't know. I don't know much about that. They could have been. Where are they? Might as well tell you, I guess. The whole thing is blown wide open. They're staying in the Metropolitan Auto Court out on Bayshore Hutton. Which cabin? Second one on the right. Where's the money? We split it before we separate. You can have my share. But I wish it would buy back the last few days. Come on, Tony. I'll send you down to the station. <laughs> Two more squad cars had been added. No trouble was expected or had picking up the other two San Francisco men, Mark Rose and Leo Barrett. But at the Metropolitan Auto Court, where the three ex-convicts were staying, trouble was expected. Well, I think that's about the best we can do. Two exits. We've got both of them covered. The other people who might be staying here? Well, they'll be all right, even if there's firing. As long as we can keep these skins inside, or at least just trying to get out. Well, that's your case. We'll have to try to it anyway. I'll go wake them up. This gale hasn't already. Now, don't be a hero. You in there. Open up. I'm a police officer. Lieutenant Clark. Lieutenant. I shot the lieutenant. Cover me on the door. I'm dead. Watch the window. Get down, sergeant. finished one of them was alive the other two in the cabin were ripped to pieces but that and the recovery of the money hardly paid for the loss of lieutenant clark who died before he reached the hospital it 
probably isn't important, but there's an odd commentary to this. The gunfight and Lieutenant Clark's death made only a column on page two of the morning paper. The storm he died in grabbed the page one headlines. Written by Gil Dowd with music by Wilbur Hatch. Edmund O'Brien's latest picture is a Paramount Pictures production, Warpath. Featured in tonight's cast were Howard McNear, Ed Begley, I Everback, Jim Nusser, Virginia Gregg, and Janet Scott. This is Dick Cutting, inviting you to join us next week at the same time. You can sing it again this evening, and if Dan Seymour calls you, maybe you can sing it off the name of the fabulous Phantom and win $5,000 in cold, hard cash, plus $10,000 more in fine prizes. Worth it? <laughs> you bet it is. For Sing It Again also brings you a whole hour of grand musical fun as you listen to Alan Dale, Judy Lynn, Bob Howard, the Riddlers, and Ray Block's Orchestra. Sing It Again comes to you every Saturday evening on most of these same CBS stations. Sing it again this evening, won't you? And now, stay tuned for Vaughn Monroe's Caravan, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. It's where everyone laughs at Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy every Sunday night the Columbia Broadcasting System.